Hey guys, it's me Maria Thea Angelica G. Agbay, and for today's video, we will discuss about global governance. This is from Module 2, Lesson 5. In this topic, we have three main contents. The first one is global governance as a structure, a process, and as a mechanism. Next, historical evolution of the global governance since World War II, the current global order and challenges. And the last one, emerging powers and new global order, opportunities and challenges. Let's get it on right away to the first part which explains more about global governance. For us to understand the overall of this topic, let us first define what is global governance. Global governance is a purposeful order that emerges from institutions, processes, norms, formal agreements, and informal mechanisms that regulate action for a common good. Global governance is a means to manage issues that cut across national borders, whether it is a pandemic, a financial crisis, climate change, or a geo-economic dispute. The goal of global governance, roughly defined, is to provide global public goods, particularly peace and security, justice and medication systems for conflict, functioning markets, and unified standards for trade and industry. Now let's discuss on the first main content of this topic, which is about the multiple perspectives on global governance, as a structure, as a process, and as a mechanism. Let's first start with as a structure. Structure means system of rules, institutionalized modes of social construction. Structurally, the global economy has been sustained for many years by an institutional character consisting of major economic institutions like the IMF or the International Monetary Fund, the World Bank Group, and the GATT or the General Agreement on Tariffs and Trade, created under the auspices of the Bretton Woods system led by the Transatlantic Alliance after World War II. Now moving on, global governance as a process is framed more comprehensively to encapsulate a range of actors exercising authority at global level, justifying calls for processes to become more participative and inclusive. Process is characterized by interaction and participation amongst different actors to coordinate and manage issues as they arise. It is therefore a norm-generating process through different practices of governing. Now let's talk about global governance as a mechanism. Global governance can be seen more practically as a mechanism to make collective decisions, enforce global rules, and address common problems. Mechanisms being collectively pushed by agents sealing to govern activities in their respective issue area. Governance is about decision-making and developing mechanisms and institutions required for achieving desired policy outcomes. Now let's proceed to the second part of this topic, which is about the evolution of global governance. Now as what you can see in the screen, the diagram shows the milestones of the global governance since World War II. This is from the Bretton Woods system to the Marshall Plan in the early 1940s, down to the rise of the financial crisis and the concept of BRICS and the first BRICS summit in the 2000s. So to sum this all up, global governance began in the mid-19th century. It became particularly prominent in the aftermath of World War I, and more so after the end of the World War II. Since the World War II, the number of international organizations has increased substantially. The number of actors, whether they be states, non-governmental organizations, firms, and epistemic communities who are involved in the governance relationship has also increased substantially. 
Now, what are the current order and challenges of global governance? First, we have the managing the global power shift. It is said that by 2050, Brazil, China, and India will constitute 40% of the global output, up from the 10% in the 1950s. It is also said that the future of the world and the success of global governance are very much dependent on the interaction between the existing and emerging powers. Another global challenge is that provisions of global public goods. This is when policy coherences becomes critical. Another is legitimizing global governance. This determines the effectiveness and inclusiveness of global governance. Talking about the encounter and challenges of global governance, it has these following channels. So first, for trade, we have the World Trade Organization, which is the only global international organization dealing with the rules of trade between nations. Next, we have investment. We have CSR or the corporate, corporate Social Responsibility, which is a form of international private business self-regulation which aims to contribute to societal goals of a philanthropic, activist, or charitable nature by engaging in or supporting volunteering or ethically oriented practices. We also have labor, human rights, and etc. Next, we have the aid. We have the OACD, which means Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, which is an international organization that works to build better policies for better lives. Digital to Analog Converter, or DAC, and ODA, which is the Official Development Assistance, is also valuable in this perspective. Next, we have the financial institutions, we have the World Bank and the IMF or the International Monetary Fund, and lastly, the UN system, which is for security and development. What I'm about to mention are just some of the aims that global governance wishes to address for every alliance countries. We have the bottom billion, climate change, inequality in developing countries, urbanization and migration, globalization, and financial stability. Now let's head on to the third and the last main content of this topic, which is about emerging powers and global orders, its opportunities and challenges that arises. Talking about the opportunities and challenges of global governance, the first in line is the BRICS countries that are gradually gaining greater influence over the international decision-making process. These BRIC countries are Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. Given their expanding economic size and increasingly active diplomacy, they are managing the influence of these emerging powers and reforming global institutions that has become decisive issues for establishing an effective global governance system. Next is the advancing international cooperation. This also includes the reforming international finance, financial institutions, which are the International Monetary Fund, the World Bank, and the UN Security Council. The next one is giving spaces to institutional initiatives such as G20, BRICS Bank, which will open up to the developing world new resources, experiences, and understanding of the priorities of emerging powers. It also tackles about coordinating a bordering pluist landscape or the issue of coherence. Also have promoting institutional diversity in global governance to make it more inclusive and coherence, which will cover issues including economic liberalization, technological diffusion, intellectual authority, 
see for all global governance in action and high level panel report on post 2015 based on MDG's agenda. Emerging powers and global orders also include incorporating ideas of the global south, trilateral cooperation, and China DAC or Digital to Analog Converter Study Group. It also has new spaces and denser networks linking DAC and non-DAC donors. Denser networks linking researchers from rising powers and submerging powers. It also includes new spaces and denser networks linking researchers from different rising powers. Official recognition of the importance of mutual learning based on first-hand experience is also there. Donor agency from submerging powers also finds ways to support mutual learning in global governance. This diagram shows the components of the IDS or Intrusion Detection System Rising Powers in International Development Program and these highlights the following. The Global Development Cooperation Spaces Study Learning from the Rising Powers BRICS Countries State of the Debate Studies BRICS Africa Footprint Studies Development Studies Learning Partnership Political Economy of Low Carbon Transition Study and China and Brazil in African Agriculture Study And that marks the end of our discussion. Thank you for listening and I hope you have learned something. If you have questions, drop them down the comment section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to follow for more videos like this. And once again, this is me, Thea, reminding you to stay curious and keep learning. Bye!